Hello everyone. Good evening. Happy Friday. It's Friday. I know a lot of people are happy when it's Friday. I'm always happy when it's Friday, but I don't know if it's very different than any other day, to be honest, even the weekend days, but uh, but Friday is, um, Friday is a good day. So it is raining here in Oakland, California, and I am thrilled that it's raining. And uh, happy the ground is getting wet and trying to find hope and yeah, all things good in this world. And uh, been a bit of a roller coaster of a day as I try to hold what I preach, which is hope and realistic hope and action, as well as holding just sadness for rhetoric that is so uh, divisive and ugly and trying to hold trying to hold both of these so uh, it's an interesting day and I want to hear from you and what you're doing today to to keep your head up and to stay hopeful and to act and to be involved and engaged the last thing we need to do is is not be engaged that's what I think at least that's my humble opinion and thank you Jill sending love to all of you guys um yeah I, <laughs> Chris not gonna happen not gonna happen in 2020 I, I I actually have been thinking of political office more than ever before not in any serious way not in any way with a plan so don't don't get all don't create hats yet. <laughs> um, but I think I just really revel in our role as citizens and I really revel in my role as a citizen and we're getting closer to forming our our PAC. I've told you about that. We're creating a political action committee here um, in the East Bay in Oakland and focusing on electing officials who will be animal friendly, so electing animal friendly officials and also helping to create and push forward uh, animal friendly legislation and stop anti-animal legislation. So that's what we're focusing on uh, here in the East Bay in Oakland and I'm really excited about it. Debbie says today we all need tuxedo cats. We do. That is one terribly fantastic thing we could do is all have tuxedo cats <laughs> near us. Uh, Donna is protesting in DC with Gretchen. I know there's a lot of protests going on around the world, around the country. Uh, I know there's a lot happening in um, here in, in Oakland, in the Bay Area. Megan says, I have a hunk, Megan or Megan, I have a heavy heart, but I'm hopeful. We're going to go to the Women's March in D.C. and hope to continue the work at home. That's the idea. I think the thing that these marches will do is just create solidarity and create a sense of unity, which is what we all need. I'm not a marcher. Just gonna admit it, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I use my voice in other ways, but I do think that marches create unity and a single voice and a unified voice that is that is so needed today. And and because an opportunity was missed today by the leader of the United States of America, because a message of unity and solidarity was missed. I think it's up to each and every one of us to be that messenger of solidarity and unity and togetherness and hope and truth for all of us, for everybody, for every single person and being uh, in the United States and in the world. So I saw a wonderful quote, I think it was Marion Williamson said, we all know who Trump is going to be. We all know what he's going to be. The question is, who are we going to be? And I think that is exactly what we need to keep asking ourselves. Who are we? What are we doing? How are we using our voice? And use it. And use it. And at the same time, keep pressing the representatives who represent our voice in the federal government to represent us. I know I feel confident, at least here in California, that our representatives are speaking for us. I have to say, I'm going to say it, and you might not agree with me. 
You might not agree with me, but my representative in the House, Barbara Lee, did not go to the inauguration, and I lament that because I think we need all voices of compassion and justice standing there. I mean, I talk about being the vegan in the room. It's the same idea of being the compassionate person in the room, and I'm not proud that my representative wasn't there. Our senators were there. And we need to be that voice in the face of that ugliness. Imagine if every one of the people who disagreed with Trump didn't show up. Uh, that, that is not what we need to do. We need to show up and we need to have our voices heard and our faces seen and our disagreement uh, noted. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Chris says, I'm drinking my emotions uh, about today away while watching my cat play with her toys. Just what I needed. I'm going to be honest with you, Chris. I've already had a little glass of wine. Already had a little glass, just a little bit. About an hour ago with the late lunch. Figured I deserved it. <laughs> Felt good. Um, thank you, Jill. Jill agrees. Singing, sharing words of affirmation, drinking green juice, and being love indeed. Jennifer says, how great to see you on this dark day. It is a dark day. Dark, literally figuratively, but remember in the darkness, there is not, it's, I, I really believe this. I really believe this. I'm not saying it because it sounds like a good uh, affirmation or because it sounds, you know, quotable, but the truth is in the darkness is the inscrutable and is the potential and possibility for creating what is the truth. So in that unknowingness, and that is where we are. I mean, we know some things and we're reacting and we're responding and some things we don't know. And we have the opportunity to create and write and not just react. I really worry that we'll only react to, and I think it's been happening a lot because I think some of us are just shocked as well. You just, you just can't believe it. My husband's so good for me because... There are times when I'm reading an article about something related to Trump and I just shake my head and I go, unbelievable. And he goes, really? Is it? Is it unbelievable? And I think that's part of what we have to get out of is get out of being shocked and get out of being surprised. I think the time for, for that is past <laughs> because we know who he is. And again, the question is, who are we and who do we want to be? But um, yeah. Marina says, not watching the inauguration, for sure. Very sad today, and very sad the people at Costco serving grass-fed cows really upset me. Not a good day. Yeah, I'd say that this is probably a day you want to stay close, like Joellen is saying, cuddle with your, with your, with your rescued animals, cuddle with your people, cuddle with your um, selves, and just at least be in a safe place. I, you know, I went back and forth. I listened to a little bit of the inauguration, or I watched some of it on uh, the New York Times website. I listened to a little bit of commentary afterwards on NPR. I, um, I lamented that Chuck Schumer was booed and jeered when he was talking about unification, unity. That made me sad. And then I had to shut it off, and I would listen to the Tao Te Ching, or I would get to work. I would I had a friend for lunch today, had her come over for lunch, so I did that. So it's kind of in and out of kind of feeling all of these different things at the same time, I'm just kind of moving in and out. But I do think it's not a day to go and, uh, you know, and put yourself in the position where you're going to feel worse, where maybe you're not going to feel supported. So I do think staying really close to home and close to, to like-minded loved ones is a good thing. Katie says, I've just been doing everything I can to keep together and not be so lost with all the awful news that flows in every moment, protesting tomorrow in Boston with my friends. I'm so proud of my American friends who continue to march and protest. I, um, and then we saw Megan. So um, Chris added... If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, um, you have to keep moving forward. Indeed. And we will. And we are. Katie says, I hadn't considered the perspective of being the compassionate person in the room. I do agree. But I also have to balance that with the idea that my representatives did not want to stand in support of this new and terrible agenda. I don't know what's right. I'm not judging. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's a right answer. I don't have the right answer. But I, you know, as... You know, as, as that person standing as my representative, I totally understand, I get it, and just imagine if every single representative who didn't agree with him didn't show up. And that would mean a lot of, a lot of 
you know, like-minded people. And I wouldn't want that. We can't be absent. We cannot be absent. We have to show up and show our faces and, like I said, have our disagreement registered, have us be there, and strong and not reactive. You know, I think it's really tempting to give over our power to one person. And I don't think that's the right thing to do. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. But we are not powerless. We're not. We're not. I don't care what anybody says. It's tempting to just react and and feel despair and see the darkness and see the ugliness and just react, react, react. But if we do that, we're giving away all of our power. And I don't think that's what we want to do. Um, the drapes and the cult of the Oval Office are gold already. He and his people already raised from the White House webpage, the climate change, civil rights, and LGBT. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like Debbie. Debbie's just changing the subject. I tried a Beyond Meat burger today, and it wasn't bad. I haven't tried the Beyond Meat burger. Well, actually, no, I don't think I've tried the newest one. I don't think I have. Scarlett says, hello, very poignant day watching the inauguration. But my two black kitties haven't seemed to notice and are currently grooming each other, joining the Women's March tomorrow here in, I guess, San Jose. We are not powerless, CPG. That is true. That's a good quote. <laughs> uh, it's not one person. It's the Senate and the House and his horrible administration. Right, Tiffany, but we're going to have to see what happens. I don't want to be naive and I don't want to sound naive, but I really do believe in the Constitution. I believe in the fact that we are a... Um, a country of laws, and if we're all so afraid of what we're so afraid of, then I do believe justice will prevail. I believe justice always prevails. I believe truth prevails. I do believe in the pendulum swinging. I do believe in reactiveness, and I do believe that everything that's happening right now is a reaction to to the last eight years. I, I, there's so much to say that's just not black and white. Uh, that and some of it is black and white uh, that you it wasn't going to happen that we were going to get in we weren't going to get Cory Booker in after this administration after the Obama administration that's just not how it works not in a divisive country like we are you weren't going to get another obviously four years of, of Obama but or someone like Obama it just doesn't work that way and I do think that some of what's happening in reaction uh, I do think some of it's a reaction to his race. I think because we haven't addressed race issues in this country, and even with a black president for eight years, we haven't addressed race in this country. It's no surprise. It's no surprise that you swing so far on the other side in reaction to what we just had. So, so in a way, you know, I'm not surprised, and there's work to be done, and maybe. There will be more work done on behalf of race relations in this country in this kind of divisive atmosphere than could have been done with someone like Obama, who really, I think, was afraid to talk about race, especially in the first term, because it would have just appeared that he was just playing the race card and he would have been criticized for that, for better or for worse. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I think he could have spoken up more, but he didn't. And I know why he didn't. So I do believe in the the light that comes from facing this kind of darkness. And I say this kind of darkness. I don't want to sound ominous like he's some evil um, evil being, because I don't believe he is. He's a human being who's incredibly flawed. So when I say darkness, I mean the feeling of hopelessness and the feeling of despair and the feeling that all the things we care about are going to be eroded. And some of that's going to happen. Is it all irreversible? No, I don't think all of it's irreversible. We, will destruction happen? Yes. Will bad things happen? Yes. But I don't believe that's the end of the story. You know, I, I think it was Obama talking about this at the in his... Um, in one of his last speeches where he said, this isn't the period, this is the comma. I would say it's a semicolon, <laughs> if you want to be kind of more grammatically correct. I, I don't think this is the period. Whatever happens in the next month, year, four years is not the end of the story. And we have to be part of writing what that story is. And I don't think we want to just give in to it's all bleak, it's all awful, it's all horrible, he's evil. I don't think that's the story that's true, and I don't think that's the story I want to tell. And of course, Tiffany is right. You know, the, the, the myth that, that Trump has created around this idea that America was great, I mean, there, <laughs> when? Like, it's great today, 
and it's going to be great tomorrow and we have work to do to make it better tomorrow than it is today and it's better than it was yesterday but this idea that there was some you know bastion of perfection in this country is wrong um mark says uh, see what happens. A hundred days and we will see. Though I suspect all of the media hype, the fear has colored the debate with fear. Rational, logical thought, dialogue, tolerance, and compassion. Obama was no saint. Much uh, war during his eight years. Trump promises to be real change. Um, it looks like you have more to say there, Mark. Um, do I have any vegan Republican friends? Um... Gosh, I must. I might. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, I have family members who are Republican, but vegan Republican friends. I have to think about that. Maybe acquaintances, neighbors. Yeah, so I mean, I'm friendly with some of my neighbors, and I know they're Republican, but they're not vegan. They're not vegan. Um, good, Kitty. That's the idea. Say goodbye to humanity's funding. Possibly, Debbie, for the time being. Possibly. Tiffany agrees with my um, thoughts about race. Didi, we, the people, have an opportunity to make America great again, but uh, it won't happen through apathy or destructive protests. We must peacefully unite, act upon our conviction, and take a stand for what is right. Indeed, everything happened for a reason, says Alex. Little Atticus made my day today, says Ginny. You're a better, more optimistic person than myself. Um, wonder if he, if there'll be no White House dog. Um, yeah, let me just see what else he got. No, a vegan Republican is not like a unicorn, but probably less common, for sure. Um, yeah. It's, again, you know, it's, a, it's about us being active. It's about us writing the story. It's about not being completely reactive all the time. And it's about keeping it in perspective. It's about looking, you know, I'm guilty of reading, and my husband points this out to me often. I, you know, it, it's really tempting to just kind of read the things that, you know, it's an echo chamber, right? We all do it. We all live in an echo chamber, especially these days when all of the, um, you know, we can just surround ourselves with people who think the way we do and care about what we care about and, and write what we write. And, and it can be really tempting to not look outside of that. And I think it's really helpful to read things outside of what is just going to validate what you already believe and what you already think. Read some Republican blogs. Listen to some Republican podcasts. Not everybody who disagrees with you is a crazy maniac. And not everybody who voted for Trump is a crazy maniac. And not every Republican in Congress is a crazy maniac. And I believe that wholeheartedly, 100%. And if we think that everybody else is a crazy maniac but us, then we're just feeding into the same divisiveness, into the same rhetoric that we oppose other, you know, we oppose the Democrats doing or the liberals or progressives or the non-Trumps, whatever you want to call it, you know, without being politicized here. Um, I think it's clear what my political position is, but I'm not so myopic that I think I'm right 100% and everybody else is wrong who doesn't, you know, have the same political party checked off. Um, Heather says, I try to follow your advice and have unconditional compassion for those who disagree with me. It's not easy. It's not easy. It is absolutely not easy. If this stuff were easy, we'd all be, you know, we'd all be saints and we'd all be, you know, little Buddhas. <laughs> it's not easy. This stuff is really challenging. Um, Mark says, your voice radio is a great Republican podcast. Your voice radio. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Uh, helps me see things differently. Good point you have. Awesome. I like that. Yeah, I mean, like, like Intelligence Squared is a good one. Listening to the Commonwealth Club, you know, there's lots of different viewpoints in the Commonwealth Club. Reading the Wall Street Journal, just reading different editorials and perspectives, and just getting a rounder perspective, I think, is really important. It helps you feel less doom and gloom, because if you look at headlines, even from publications that I agree with, that I support, that I subscribe to, some of them can really be fear baiting and fear inducing and fear creating. And, 
And and that's not good. I don't think that's good. Especially when sometimes you look at what the meat of the article is and it's really kind of unsubstantial, but yet the headline could be such that you feel so much fear, but also vindictive, not vindictiveness, vindication, because you feel that like, yup, see, everything's awful. Yup. God, we're going to hell in a handbasket. Everything sucks. And then it just kind of feeds that. And then we keep telling that story. And then we all feel pretty crappy. And I don't think that's good. And I don't think that's real. And I don't think it's realistic. And I don't think it's the whole story. Um... <laughs> The Rubin Report says, Anjali on YouTube might be a good start. He's a classical liberal who interviews conservatives and Republicans unbiasedly. I love it. Awesome. I love these suggestions. Uh, Joan says, my husband Paul is vegan and registered Republican, although he didn't vote for Trump. Yeah. And I know him, Joan, and he is no evil monger. He is no evil person. Paul is a wonderful person. Um, Susan says, I think it's way past time for a national discussion on the subject of mental health. And what about vetting the person who wants to sit in the Oval Office for personality disorders, passing them, passing them security uh, checks that anyone else in the government must take? Yeah, there's some changes we have to make. There's definitely some changes we have to make. Katie says, I do agree that we have to find a way to try and see Trump supporters of other human beings in the same way we have to accept that there will be friends and family who will never be vegetarian or vegan. We don't have to support their opinions and we don't have to pretend to be, didn't get the end there, but I get your gist. I get the point there, Katie. Regan says, but we choose what we focus on, whatever we focus on in life. So focus on love and life and compassion. It really is true, Regan. Um, I really believe that. I think if we focus on fear and and, we're, and, and focus on that divisiveness, I think that's what we become as well. And so this isn't about some, like, you know, uh, like being all frou-frou and just being like, I'm just going to focus on love and I'm just going to focus on love. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I don't think it's what you're saying, Regan, either. But the point is we can hold both. We can, we can kind of take a deep breath, step back a little bit, Stop using so much fear-based language around this administration and just roll up our sleeves and just walk forward. And, and, and being active and not just reactive, I think, is also really important. It will help us feel empowered. I know, you know, so we're setting up this PAC, this political action com committee, and my friend Tim, who's going to be part of it, he said to me the other day after we had another meeting, he said, do you feel more empowered? Do you feel more empowered? Because that has been one of my concerns, right, is you feel so despondent and you feel so powerless, and we're not. And I do believe in acting locally. When I say locally, it could be local in your own town. It could be local in your state. It could be local in your region, in your county. But there's a lot of work to do. And when we get focused on such big national federal issues, some of which we're going to have control over, some of which we're not going to have control over, then we tend to lose we tend to, that local issues tend to get lost and, and we have a lot of power locally. And again, locally doesn't have to just be your own little town, could be your county, could be your state. But I think there's a lot of work to be done on that level that we actually have power over. Yeah, Brian, no, I, I don't think so. Oh my God, that's like the worst job. I would never want that job. That's like the hardest job. Wouldn't want it. Wouldn't want it. He's going to find out. It's a really hard job. It's a really hard job, and it takes it takes some pretty serious leadership skills, and uh, putting your ego aside. Even though I think you have to have a pretty sizable ego to run for president. Uh, Joan says I think so too, but I'm kind of partial. We love you right back. Love to you both. Um, what did Mark say? Mark said something up here. Been vegan 30 years, not a leftist. Yeah, but yes, right wing people need dietary help. Compassion in action. Headlines can be fearful. Yes, true. Mark's agreeing with me. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Scarlett, Scarlett, did you have a question? Scarlett, did I see a question up ahead? I asked because when my husband and I were in Germany, the people we spoke with were so afraid, especially in Frankfurt. So what do you mean you ask, Scarlett? Did I miss your, miss your question? Heather says, keep doing what you're doing for the animals. They need you. They need all of us. MJ, we have to participate in our system, do our civic duty, call our representatives, write letters, support our causes, find people we want to run for Congress in two years and support them. Absolutely. <laughs> no worry, Kirsten. We'll see you later. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's very interesting because the rhetoric around the the around the world that's what's really interesting. I mean, nobody follows, you know, everywhere I travel, people follow politics in the United States from wherever, but we don't follow other countries as closely to our, to our detriment. It's a real, it's a real detriment. I think it's a real shame that we don't, but people follow the United States all around the world. And yeah, there are people concerned all around the world, but the same rhetoric that Trump is using is the same rhetoric that was used in the UK to inspire Brexit, to inspire the UK leaving the European Union. And if you listen to the rhetoric, it's all the same. Listening to his inaugural speech today was so sad because it's just, it was so isolationist. And that's, that's not what I want to be. That's not who I want to be. That's not where I want to be. That's not the kind of country I want to live in. And countries around the world hear that and I think are really nervous about that. But it's the same rhetoric that's being used in France. It's being used in Italy. It's being used in the UK. And, um, and, 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 and in a way, if we look underneath it, we, you know, we might find that there, there are real concerns that people have, you know, I think people are very good people, but I think it can be really challenging to be altruistic and magnanimous when we're afraid of our own, you know, uh, uh, like making our ends meet, not having money to pay rent, not having money to feed our children, <laughs> It's very distracting if Charlie shows up. Charlie shows up. Um, and so I think that we have to really understand where it's coming from as well and and just be mindful of that and then and then you know figure out what we can do to be to be part of the solution for that. But I think there is real fear underneath. Um, and I think that's what he's speaking to. Um, and that's all he's speaking to, unfortunately, but I think that's what he's speaking to. <laughs> There's a cat sighting. Um, oh, who's the puppies? This is Charlie. He just misses his mama. Fear is an acronym, says Regan, for false evidence that appears real. I like that. Hi, Beverly. Yes, Charlie has arrived. Um, Marx is living in Sweden 20 years, has shown me how culture can almost commit suicide. Trump has valid points. Socialism is not... An option, tragic, 10 million here, uh, 250,000 refugees. We cannot support Islamic terrorists recruited here. We do not know who they are. It's not easy. I think we're in a really challenging time. That's, um, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. But there's a lot of dialogue that we need to have around this. And that's not what I'm seeing coming from at least the, the new president. I think it's coming from other places of leadership. And it can come from our own leadership as as citizens and it can come from us encouraging our local and regional and state leaders to um to have dialogue we need to come together we need to talk about these these are serious issues and 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 there's not one answer there's definitely not one answer but but i think we need to talk about them more yep yep Although MJ, you know, one thing that David points out to me all the time, his cabinet choices are alarming, no doubt, absolutely 100%. But, you know, one of the things David said to me in, in trying to keep me sane is how many of Obama's cabinet members do you know the names of? Not as many as the Trump cabinet, right? Um, they're not all powerful either. They're not Sauron, okay? They're not all powerful and neither is he. Um, there are checks and balances. That's what makes this country so unique, and that's what makes the formation of it so unique, and it's why there are countries all around the world who have modeled themselves after the United States, because there's a lot to admire, and there's a lot to, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to have faith in. Um, but the truth is, yeah, how many of Obama's, like, office administ like, his cabinet did you know? I knew a couple. I knew a couple. But I didn't know a lot. I didn't know a lot. Meaning that, you know, they're not the ones creating the policies. They're, they're, it's not surprising that he's built this cabinet. Uh, it's not surprising. It's a reflection of who he is. So um, the point is, again, yes, I can say yes, that's really scary. And let's wait and see what they do yet. We haven't seen what they're going to do yet. And we have to trust that there are checks and balances. Yes, it's a Republican-led Congress. Yes, but all Republicans are not insane. And he's not a true Republican in the true sense of the word. And so he's not, you know, 
he's not their guy in many ways. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. And we have to wait for it to play out. Like, he's been president for five hours, six hours. We have to, we have to wait to see how this plays out to then start responding. Um, do, 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 um, Robin says, believe it or not, some conservatives are vegan animal welfare advocates. Indeed, Robin, I agree. Uh, Delphina says she's missed my, um, Facebook lives. Love you and your wisdom. Thanks, Bianca. I don't know. Just spouting. Um, his cabinet choices are so, Mark, there's no dialogue from any side here. Yeah, we need dialogue. We need dialogue. I'm having a dialogue. We're having a dialogue. Um, uh, I've lived in the Middle East. I was treated better there than here. Let's not blame the Muslims. Was someone, was someone doing that? I hope not. Uh, David has a point. But the Republicans are trying to remove the ethics committee. Yeah, but then they stopped, like, as soon as they got pushed back. Did you see that, Kitty? Did you see that? It's not to say that they're not going to try it again, but as their first, you know, action, that's what they were trying to do. But, but the Democrats pushed back, and they stopped trying to dismantle the ethics committee. I mean, it was just an example of, like, okay, you know, they want to be reelected as well. Like these are career politicians, like it or not, for better or for worse, and they want to be reelected. And so, let's just say they tried and it didn't. It didn't succeed. Yes, Susan, it's true. But I think what happens when so Susan said we could basically trust Obama's choices. We didn't worry so much about them. But I think we also got complacent. I think when we, you know, when we have someone in who looks like us and sounds like us and thinks like we do and believes like we do, and he wasn't perfect, but he was, yeah, I definitely admired and, and adored him. Um, you get complacent. So this will make everybody not, no one's complacent now. No one's complacent now. And so we're fired up and we're going to act and we're going to probably be more active than we have been in the last 10 years or eight years at least. That's good. Like, that's really good. I support that. I think that's really good because I think people get complacent and lazy and they're thinking about their own world and their own lives and they're not engaged. And, and, and so, you know, so things happen without us, without us paying attention. That's not good either. That's not good either. It's not the way it should be. Yeah, no, I agree, Heather. I agree. Yeah, Devos is pretty bad. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Yeah, I, th I do think so, Regan. I think he is going to... I think he's going to go head-to-head -head with the Republicans more than we think. I really do. I think it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Well, Bernie's engaged, man. Bernie's, he's, he's out there constantly pushing back, but in a really reasonable way. I really appreciate what, how he goes about it. So he's not, he's not gone. He's there. He's there. So that's great. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Be well. Good. I'm glad we're fired up. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is true. We are not we are not complacent now. Charlie's still here. Do you see him right here? He's on my lap. Can't really see him. He is a real leader. And so again, so again, I would say we know who Trump is. He has shown himself. He has shown himself to be who he is. The question is, who are you? And who do we want to be? And where do we find inspiration? And where do we find motivation? And some of it is we can find motivation in what we're seeing in the White House right now. So use that as fodder. Use it to be more active. Use it to be more fired up. Use it to be more engaged. Use it to be more uh, engaged in our democracy, really appreciate the democracy that we're in, read books on the founding fathers, really understand why we have the, the system in place that we have, contact your legislators, be engaged with them. I told you in an old 
um, Facebook Live that some really helpful advice from a former staff member in Congress was the first thing to really do in terms of being engaged and getting our voice heard with our legislators is calling them. The second thing is being it's, it's being in person. Uh, so going to events and going to meetings, showing up at their office at Capitol Hill, showing up at their office in your state legislature. Um, and then writing a handwritten letter, and then email. But email is last on the list. So if we really want our voices heard, pick up the phone, leave a recording, talk to a staff member, ask for a meeting, be as engaged as possible, and really you know, focus on what we're able to do. Uh, I'm really excited about the pack that we're creating. I'm super excited to be completely focused on, um, on, on electing officials that are gonna speak for uh, compassion. And there's so much we there's so much we can do. There's so much to do. Unfortunately, there's so much to do, but there's so much we can do, and that's what's really exciting. Um, and Elizabeth Warren, oh, she's amazing. I think the silver lining says Beck key the key of this situation is there is a national dialogue happening between all parties the democrats have to regroup because of this yep so to me this is what needed to happen to get change especially in liberal circles i absolutely agree becky uh, Sangha says, I'm super fired up too, just what I needed to hear. I'm gloomy. It's gloomy. It's rainy and dark here in Texas too, but I'm motivated. It is, but I kind of love it. I don't know. Maybe it just, I don't know. I don't know. I love the, the coziness it creates. Um, buy Tom Ford, stay in a, uh, LV hotel other than the win, watch Merle, Merle Street movies and listen to the Hamilton soundtrack. Um, yeah, so this pack is, um, it is, uh, we're creating it. So it's, it's. I think right, we're working on the name right now. We're kind of finalizing that. And it's probably going to be called the East Bay PAC Animal. And the PAC stands for Political Action Commun uh, Committee. And it is um, about being able to raise funds. And I'll be letting you know about this because obviously we'll be taking membership contributions. And it's being able to raise funds from individuals and then taking those funds and being able to use that money to elect animal-friendly legislators and also working with existing legislators to, uh, to pass animal-friendly legislation. So it's super, it's super exciting and it's, where it's, it's, it's the way the game works in, uh, in, um, in our country. So that's what we're going to be doing. You're welcome, Marina. I'm so glad the wine helps. Definitely, definitely helps. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a movie with my husband tonight. We're gonna put the fire on. We're gonna watch a movie. I'm kind of in the mood for a Japanese movie. I don't know. Just I don't know. Just maybe I need to see some fighting. <laughs> maybe I should see some samurai sword fighting. I do kind of want to watch something that I know and love already, and something that just gets me really fired up and motivated. And art often does that for me. Um, yeah, Cory Booker, possibly. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see where the pendulum swings after Trump. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Is the country going to be ready for another black president after Trump? Maybe, maybe not. But as uh, Becky said, I think this is really what needed to happen. Um, and I wouldn't get so, you know... <sighs> I think a vegan president would be amazing, but you know, we just had a black president and we have more problems with race relations in this country than, um, than ever before. So I wouldn't put all of our faith in one person. All right. So don't put all of your fear in one person. And I wouldn't put all of your faith in one person either. We need to elect animal friendly people at every level of government that is local, regional, state, and federal. So let's not put all of our blueberries in one basket because one person isn't going to change everything. One woman president wasn't going to change everything for women. One black president didn't change everything for people of color in this country. And one vegan isn't going to do the same thing. So we absolutely have to work to create and elect legislation and people who are going to to do the right thing, and we will have that again. We absolutely will have that, and we have that right now in our legislation, in our legislature, um, both locally, statewide, and federally. They're there. They're there. 
and Cory Booker's there. He might be able to do more work as a senator than he is able to do as a president. Think about that. So how are we using the people we already have in positions of power now? How are we using those people? How are we using our voices and our money to elect the people at midterm elections? Midterm elections are only two years away. That's not far. So what are we doing about that? Let's not be in this kind of utopia, you know, that if we had a vegan president, everything would be great. And I don't mean to be ranting about that. Of course, it'd be great if we had a person who's reflecting my values in the office, but so, so did Obama. But there's a lot to be done at every level. So I'm going to end with that. I'm going to end with not putting all of our hopes in one person, not putting all of our fears in one person. Does that make sense? So get out there and connect with your legislators. Get out there and connect with your neighbors, with your family, with like-minded people, with activists, with advocates. Every single one of us are as powerful as that person who is now the president of the United States in every way, in every way. So we are powerful. Don't underestimate that. The next vegan you meet is the most powerful person in the country. The next animal advocate you meet is the most powerful person. The next senator you write to, the next representative you write to, the next mayor you write to, whatever it is, they're powerful. So don't put all of your fears in one person and don't put all of your hopes in one person. Put all of your hopes in this person. Not me. <laughs> Wait, I have to redo that. Not me. I don't mean me. I mean, put all of your hopes in you and what you're p capable of doing. If every single one of us reached the potential that we could reach, imagine what this world would be like. That's what it's about. So each one of us has to be who we, who we, who, who the best we can be, the most compassionate we can be operating from our highest selves, and I know that will inspire others around us. All right? All right. That's all I have. Go drink some wine or tea or whatever will warm your belly. and Go watch something that's going to make you happy and go be around beings who will make you happy. And you all make me happy and thank you for listening and for being open and for listening to me and, uh, and, and just being fabulous. I, we can all inspire each other. So go be inspiring. Go do the work that has to be done. Feel as hopeful about what, the, what you can do in this world as this one position, this one office position in, in the country. We all have immense power, so go, so go, go use it. And now for wine. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick-Gaudreau. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being you. Take care.